Okay, antioxidants. So first of all, there are normal chemical processes in our body that, for example, allow us to obtain energy from food where unstable molecules are produced as a byproduct. And we call these free radicals or reactive oxygen species. They've been implicated in a whole host of chronic diseases like diseases of aging, cognitive decline, heart disease, eye disease. They can disrupt genes and they can lead to things like cancer. But these oxygen species also have some role in the body. So they signal to cells when there is inflammation in the body and when we need to mobilize our defense. So the aim of our system is to try and keep them at an optimum balance. And we do this with the use of antioxidants. They either remove the free radicals uh, once they've been formed or they prevent their formation in the first place. And they do this through a process of electron transfer that we don't need to talk about. There are thousands of different antioxidant molecules, but the ones you've probably heard of are vitamin C, E, and beta carotene. Lumping all these molecules into one big category known as antioxidants can be quite confusing because it's more than likely individual antioxidants have specific functions in our body that we can't substitute them for. So we need to get a selection of different antioxidants to have this effect on our body. We've seen lots of randomized controlled studies on high dose supplementation of vitamin C, E and beta carotene and unfortunately they've been quite disappointing in that they didn't have an effect on all cause mortality. When we've seen observational studies and there's clear evidence that a diet that's rich in vitamins and minerals has a phenomenal impact on chronic disease and disease prevention. So what are we missing here? Either we haven't found the right combination of vitamins, minerals and antioxidants to replicate this phenomena that we see in diet and chronic disease prevention, or we're missing something else. There are other molecules in the diets that have phenomenal impacts on our health. And this leads me nicely onto the subject of phytochemicals. Phytochemicals are basically chemical compounds that we find in plants. And there are thousands of them, and you've probably heard tons of different names for them, like phenolics, flavonoids, lignans, catkins, chlorophylls, isoflavones. They tend to have a role in plants like defense or cell signaling or cell membrane structure. And more importantly, in research, we're demonstrating how these beautiful chemicals in plants can have a role in human health as well. They potentially have roles in anti-cancer, improved cholesterol ratios, blood sugar regulation, cognition. I like to touch on the compounds as I go along and cook with them and just give you little tidbits of information. But if you did want extra information on individual compounds, I've attached the links below again so you can do your own research on them. A take home for this section is just be wary that phytochemicals exist and you can get them from plants and you don't need to high dose supplement and all these other things. Just get it from your food because there are other benefits that we don't even know about yet. If you have any specific questions about conditions or medications that you're on and how diet may impact on that, I strongly recommend you go see your doctor. And if I happen to be that person, then come and speak to me. I hope I've given you a broader understanding of micronutrients and now when you hear terms bounded around in videos you can sort of understand where it fits into your diet. I really hope you like watching the video, that's micronutrition in a nutshell, excuse the pun. Subscribe to the channel. Happy spinning, clapping, laughing, dancing in the blackness of magic. Get it, have it, bag it, throw yours.